what's up rattlers so it is a crappy rainy day here in the netherlands and i'm at houghton at the houghton reptile expo this is my first trip to europe and consequently it's my first european reptile expo so i'm really excited to get in there out of this crappy weather and check out some really cool reptiles and see how a reptile expo here in europe differs from those in the united states or canada i'm really excited to get in there and check this out I'm Dave Kaufman and I am obsessed with reptiles. And I have been since I was nine years old. 25 years later, I made a trilogy of award-winning movies about them. Now my life is all about touring the world in search of them in wild places and checking out some of the most awesome breeding facilities and reptile expos while I'm at it. So come with me and join my reptile adventures. At Rainbow Mealworms, we grow all our insects 100% naturally so that you get the freshest, most lively feeders on the market. So for all your reptile food needs, place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net. All right, so all these terrariums here, all designed, all complete, are only 85 euros, which is about 100 American dollars for a terrarium that's all designed, all complete. Waterfalls and everything. That is pretty amazing. The scope of this expo is absolutely amazing. This is one of the biggest expos I've ever been to. We've been here an hour and have only been able to see about five tables. How many species of turtles and tortoises do you work with? It's normally, normally 10, 10, 12. Uh, it's work in the, it's my home, but uh, the import, uh, export in more, uh, 20, 15 turtles. Zemen is Situa, it's Montenegro locality. Montenegro locality. Yes. yes. The leopard snakes. Yeah. I, I think it's le leopard snakes. Yeah, the leopard snakes, right, yes. right. Oh, those are awesome. Can I get it? You can, but not a lot of people have them. Oh, okay. All right, what do you got here? In the mystery bag. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a gorgeous monitor. So I really dig these displays like this. They're just plastic tubs, but each of these have glass cut to fit right in there. It's a really cool way to display your animals. Oh, look at those little baby ones. So did you breed these? Yeah. And are these the only two that you have, or do you have more than these than the rest sold? He has more. Yeah, he has more. He has more. He has 15 animals, 15 babies. Oh, 15 babies. You have 15 babies. It's, it's, a, it's, it's my lucky man. It's my hobby. It's my work. Gotcha. It, it, it's absolutely perfect. It's my, my reptile in the, the breeding, in, the, in the, the, the business, absolutely my life. Check this out. 
This is an albino black pine snake, a pure albino black pine snake. This is the only one that I've ever seen before. And frankly, before this expo, I wasn't even sure that these existed. But this is 1,500 euros, which is maybe about $1,700 US. And he's got this one, which is a female, and he's got three hets that are $500 each. They're last year's babies. That's only a couple thousand dollars for an albino black pine snake colony. And one of the things that blows me away about European herpers is that they have these really cool North American animals, but they're producing morphs that we don't have in North America. An albino black pine snake. I think I need to make some investments here. So look at this. These are about the 50th romba furs I've seen here. These are really popular in Europe. So these diamondback water snakes are only 40 euros, which is about 48 American dollars. That's crazy. So you're breeding these pectinatas. Yes. And so last year you had how many eggs? I had, uh, last year I had uh, approximately 30 eggs. 30 eggs. Yeah. All right, and so what a lot of people don't know is that the pied pectinatas are born green. Yes. All right, so how often do you have to explain to people that they're actually born green? Very often. That's yeah. why I brought the big one to the show. Nice. People can see the turnover in one year. In, so from when, green yeah. to this in one year. It, it starts when they're one year approximately. That's awesome. You have high white like this and you have low whites also. But sure. High white. Yeah, just like the ball pythons. Yeah. All right. Well, cool. Have a good show. Thanks Thank so much. You. So as far as ball pythons are concerned, they basically have the same thing over here that we have in the United States and Canada. So you've got a killer bee head clown for 125 euros. You have a bumblebee 66% head clown for 70 euros. A super inchy yellow belly for 200 euros, which is meh, about $230 US. Here's a male clown 66% head albino for 150 euros, which is about 175 US. And a pastel banana champagne for 195 euros, which is a little over, maybe about $220 US. Here's a sunbeam, which is an inchy ultramel for 395. That is a pretty cool morph. A pastel GHI het orange ghost is 200 euros, which is about $230 US. And a male banana het clown for 250 euros. And then you have the higher end ball pythons like this GHI clown for 2350. And then there's also pinstripe clowns here for 750. And then this pastel bamboo het clown for 1650. So this is another gene like a genetic stripe. This one's a D-stripe gene. All right, here's a pastel highway for 600 euros. Here's a cypress spider for 575 euros. And look at this, male banana pides are going for 375 euros, which is about 425 US. about the European market is that corn snakes are really huge over here. Uh, well, I'm Joshua Hanning. I live in the Netherlands. Um, my uh, snake uh, name is Future Moles because I do a lot with uh, corn snakes uh, or red red snakes. You're one of the few people who calls them that, but right. Good. Um, and I like uh, all the mutations and morphs and stuff. So I try to combine new things and uh, make some new things that don't exist yet. So, sure. Yeah. Well, what do we have here? 
Uh, this is an uh, Ultra Mel Red Vector. Because usually an Ultra Mel looks more like a Hypo, but this is also Hypo-ish, but uh, some people uh, think it looks like an OKT because it's the red and the oranges, but no OKT influence in this whatsoever. So. Wow. So how popular would you say the corn snakes are in European collections? Pretty popular. Uh, over here in Europe it's the most kept beginner snake, probably the, the most kept snake anyway. Yeah, I think that's um, the same all over the world actually. Yeah, probably. Um, you do, you do see some people that start with corn snakes and then say, well, it's not exciting enough, it's not big enough, they want a boa or a python or something, but uh, yeah, call me uh, call me crazy, but I like the small, colorful things. Yeah. They are so pink and yellow and purple, I like Sure, it, so yeah. I like the small, colorful things as well. So. Oh, that's fantastic. How many corn snakes do you have in your collection? Uh, about 250. 250 corn yeah. snakes. And is corn snakes all that you deal with, or do you have other snakes? Well, I did keep a lot of other snakes as well, um, but corn snakes is my main passion. It's, it's what I like, it's what I do, it's, uh, yeah, it's the best. Fantastic. Well, have a great show, great talking Thanks. to you. All right. Right, right along. <laughs> awesome. <laughs>
I want all of them. I want all the bats. So one of the things that I was really looking forward to seeing at this expo are all the European species. All the cool rat snakes and the cool lacertas and other snakes and lizards. But surprisingly, not a lot of tables here have them. There's a lot of ball pythons, there's a lot of corn snakes, there's a few berms, there's a few retics, there's chameleons, but it's basically the same thing that we have in the United States and Canada, but a few tables do have those European species that I was really excited to see here. here in Houghton, Netherlands. It was so really awesome to come to Europe for the very first time and see how the Europeans do an expo. You know, Europe and the United States and Canada, as far as herpiculture is concerned, they're pretty much on the same level. So again, the prices and what's available is pretty much the same, but it was still cool to be out here to check this out. So right now, we're gonna grab some dinner and I just wanna give a shout out to Bert and Farah. I'm gonna put their links to their Facebook pages below. Farah produces some of the most amazing crested geckos in Europe. You guys have got to check her out. She really does an amazing job with these crested geckos. So if it wasn't for them, I would not have experienced everything that I have experienced and going to experience in Europe. They have done pretty much everything for me. So Bert and Farah, I don't know how to thank you enough. But I wanna hear from you guys. What was the coolest thing that you saw in this video at this expo? Comment below and let me know. Like this video, share this video, subscribe when you do hit that bell so you never miss an upload. And until the next reptile adventure, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on.